Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to this presentation. I'd like to thank Trade Out Loud and Timing Research for inviting me back for the Synergy Trader. Um, I'm always excited to do some of these topics and hopefully provide some valuable information for those of you learning trading. Um, today, I'm going to be showing you power trading setups. I'm going to show you four of them. Um, I'm Leslie Jufless. My website is Trading Live Online. I am a CMT, that's a Chartered Market Technician, and um, you take a series of very, very rigorous exams. There's three exams total, but it really is the gold standard for learning technical analysis. I had actually traded a long time before I uh, decided to study for the CMT designation, which I obtained, I think it was in 2013. I also have two books published, Trade What You See, How to Profit from Pattern Recognition, and that's available in six languages. That's up on the screen. And the other book is Essentials of Trading. It's not what you think, it's how you think. And your mindset is very important in trading. And so that book was really a compilation of articles uh, that intended to give inspiration to traders when they need it. Now I wanna show you, if you like this type of pattern recognition, these types of patterns, um, where you can learn more with this three and a half hour course. So I put it up on this screen here. You can come back to this, but you can go to my website, Trading Live Online, and from there, just click on the trading courses and then scroll to the introduction to pattern recognition. It's three and a half hour course. It's usually $99 uh, from my website. Uh, but if you use this coupon code right down here, type it in, um, you'll receive a 20% discount with it. Um, $79, actually a few cents above $79. Uh, so that, you put that coupon code in when you're putting your information in, you create a username and a password, and then there'll be a little box that says, you know, have a coupon, click that, put the code in, and that will give you the discount. Okay, so let's get to uh, the information here today. So I'm going to show you an overview of the structure of the AB equals CD pattern. And this pattern, like all patterns in technical analysis, actually use what are called harmonics and repetitive swings to form the trading setups. And I'll be showing you examples of that and how that, how that works. And so I'm also going to show you the Gartley 222 pattern. But before you can learn this pattern, and I'm also going to show you a butterfly pattern and a three drive pattern, um, you've got to have a very good foundation in the AB equals CD because this is the root pattern for these other three patterns. So we're going to take a look at this. Uh, it's formed with three legs. I'm gonna show you the structure and I'm gonna show you how you can draw it out on your charts. Uh, I'm gonna show you some variations of where the pattern completes. One of the benefits, I think really big benefits of learning these patterns is as these patterns form, Traders can identify where the completion point to the pattern is likely to occur. And so that means that you can really plan your trade ahead of time and you can define the risk uh, to reward uh, element on it. And then you can monitor the pattern as it, as it forms. So I think that's a, a big advantage. A lot of traders just sort of jump in there and try and figure out where do I buy? Where do I, where do I sell? And this eliminates that and gives you structure in which to trade. Okay, let's move on now to the uh, structure of the pattern. The pattern was first described in 1935 by H.M. Gartley in his classic book, Profits in the Stock Market. And he described this as a corrective pattern uh, in a new trend. And the AB equals CD pattern and the Gartley pattern, they're very versatile patterns because they will appear in both ranging markets and trending markets. You apply uh, different tactics, trading tactics to each 
market environment, um, but they will form in both of those environments. And the butterfly pattern is actually known as a reversal pattern. I'll show you a couple of examples of that today. This is a very powerful uh, pattern uh, when it gets these big moves. And uh, so it's, it's well worth learning to identify this pattern. And it's really a very good contrarian pattern because generally these patterns will form uh, when the markets are at extremes. So when there's extreme bullishness or extreme bearishness in the market, these patterns uh, tend to appear and they are reversal patterns. So I mentioned that the ABCD pattern, you know, um, is very versatile in that it can show up in ranges and trends. So this slide is just an example of that. So in this parallel channel on the Euro futures, this is the intraday chart, you can see the swing sizes of both of these down swings, and they're almost exactly the same length. So this is what we refer to as the harmonics. And uh, most of the markets, individual stocks, ETFs that you're looking at, if you study the time frames, like an intraday chart or a 60 minute daily chart, you're going to be able to find the repetitive swings. And this is what builds the ABCD pattern and other patterns. So this is a ranging type um, of a pattern and this would form an A, B, B to C, C to D. So this is how um, this particular pattern can be used in ranges. So you can see that the upswings also are almost identical in this, the length of the swing. Sometimes you'll get a contraction of that. So you might have this primary length and then you get a length such as this one down here that's not quite as long. And usually that length will be um, a Fibonacci ratio of the primary swing. So this one looks like it's right about 786.786% um, uh, the length of this swing. And then after that corrects, then you get another uh, swing up very, very similar to that primary swing. And so when the prices are within a defined range like this, you can expect this type of price movement. The ABCD pattern, you can describe it as a lightning bolt shape, and it has three legs to it. So this pattern on the left side, this is it. A, B equals C, D by pattern. It's the illustration of that lightning bolt shape. So you have the first swing coming down and that's followed by a retracement. So this retracement, uh, generally we use a minimum of a 0.382 Fibonacci ratio. The C leg here, we don't want to see it exceed the start of the pattern, the A point. And on the cell patterns, you've got the A to B, you have the retracement leg. And again, you don't want to see the C exceed that A point. So this is the basic shape that you're looking for on your price charts. So this chart is an example of those harmonics of those you know, very similar length uh, swings. So the swing from the low to the high, uh, that was 34 and a quarter points. And the swing from this low to high was 35 and three quarter points very, very similar in length. And then the down swings were 23 and three quarters, 22 and three quarters. So this type of repetition happens all the time on price charts. And you have to learn whether you're in a ranging environment or you're in a trending environment. And that's going to change um, most likely the size of the swings. In strong trending environments, you might see you know, smaller uh, retracements because if the market's trending to the upside, sometimes um, buyers are aggressive getting in. So it doesn't take very much uh, retracement or pullback on, on that swing. So 
learn to recognize um, the different type of market environment that you're trading in. But again, this type of price movement, this is going to be found on uh, all markets and all time frames. So this chart of Google, a 30 minute chart, you can see how on ABCD, there's the lightning um, bolt. Um, and then as this pattern was forming that second leg, the B to C leg, there was another A, B, C, D cell pattern that formed that leg. So this particular pattern actually gave traders two opportunities. One is a sell pattern to sell the market short, and the next is the buy pattern to then go long. Well, when you're learning these patterns, you want to learn how to draw the pattern in. And when I was learning, I would print out a lot of charts and I would do a lot of them by hand, just draw them in by hand. And of course, you can use your computer also to do that. You don't need more than just a line drawing tool. Most software packages now have uh, Fibonacci ratios in them. And I'll show you the Fibonacci ratios that I use. But I'm going to show you now how to draw those three legs and how to label the pattern. Labeling the pattern is important. It's going to help you identify symmetrical patterns. And also the CD leg, the third leg, um, sometimes it extends and is longer than that primary length of the AB leg. And so I'm going to show you how to calculate um, the extensions of that CD leg. Now, here's an illustration. Here's the Fibonacci ratios that I use on my, on my chart. And again, for the BC retracement, so you have your first swing up and then you have your retracement leg. So we're looking for a minimum of a 0.382. It can, of course, go further than that. It can go to any one of these um, Fibonacci ratios. It can even go all the way as a 1.0, but you really want to make sure there's a minimum of 0.382. And from there, the market turns up. Once it gets to right around that B level or exceeds it, then you can really start monitoring for where those completion points are. Now, I call these um, three different completion points. You have the A, B, the C, D, where these legs are equal, and I call that the D 1.0. And then when this leg extends a bit further, very often it will go to the 1.27 extension ratio, so I call that the D 1.27. And then sometimes if this leg really extends, it will get to the D 1.618. And so this, again, this would be a sell pattern on the left and the buy pattern on the right. Now this ratio up here, the 0.886, this is what I call the last chance fib retracement. So a lot of times the market will do a deeper retracement, but not exceed that 1.0. The thing is a lot of traders don't don't put this on their charts. So once it exceeds the 786, a lot of traders are making an assumption that the market will continue and break that 1.0. But that 886 is that last chance and many times that's where the market will turn from. So um, you might want to study this ratio and if you can put that onto your charts, it's probably going to be a good ratio to keep track of. Okay, so to label the pattern, this is really how um, the pattern should be labeled. And you can see that once all the labeling is in, you can see that what you're really looking at are symmetrical triangles. And this symmetry uh, is important to understand because it can give you an idea, give you clues into the market conditions that you're in. But just for the labeling, it's very simple. Um, I like to use a bolder line for that lightning bolt shape, the A, B, your retracement C, and then your C to D leg. Uh, and then I just mark in the retracement ratio and the extension ratio of the B to C. So it's just simply taking the length of B to C and it multiplies by uh, either 1.27 or 1.618 and you can uh, subtract that from the C point if it's a buy pattern 
if it's a cell pattern, then you would add it to this um, to the C point. And so th knowing those ratios can help determine that ending area. So you might have a, a couple of different price levels that the pattern has the potential to complete in. Um, and that's gonna help you to manage the risk uh, in the trade when you're planning your trades with these patterns. But when you're getting started, make sure to do some labeling so that you start to see the symmetry of the pattern itself. So again, here's just a couple of tips when you're learning. So again, the C must be below A for a buy pattern. So here's our buy pattern. Here's the lightning bolt shape of the A, B, C, D. And notice how the C leg is below the A. And then the, the D leg, this is the D leg here. So it must extend beyond the B point, whether it's a buy or a sell pattern. So on the buy pattern of A, B, there's the B point. So the D has got to extend below there. It's got to get to at least equal of the length of the A to B leg. And same thing for the sell pattern. You have A, B, the C retracement, and then the uh, D leg has got to extend above that B point. So sometimes the ABCD patterns will be, you know, close to a double top because we can use that the 1.0. Remember that 886 retracement is is very close to the 1.0, but it just can't exceed it. So here's an example of that uh, type of a pattern. Uh, you can see that the market, uh, there's the equal length swing here, and then the market skidded just a bit beyond it and then started to turn to the upside. So the steps you want to take, I've got listed on this slide here, and this is uh, first drawing the lightning uh, bolt pattern in and then you want to do the labeling, check your pattern to make sure that the legs are correct and the C is below the A point. And just look at your charts and find simple wave patterns that you can draw in a simple lightning bolt pattern. So again, there's just some clues for you. And you can do this as an exercise at home. So here's another um, slide showing you how to calculate the extension. So I mentioned how to do it, but here it is listed out uh, if you'd like to use this as a checklist. It's quite easy to do. And again, all you really need are is a line um, tool and uh, some Fibonacci retracements. If you can put the extensions in, the 127, 1618, then that's even better. But if you can't, then it's very easy to calculate where that 127 or 1618 may come into. So these patterns do tend up to uh, do tend to show up fairly frequently. Again, this is the S and P 500 E mini, and the S and P um, is a really good market for these patterns. If you're an intraday trader, or even a little bit um, a longer term a swing trader, these are really great patterns for you to learn. So just here's an example uh, of some A B C D patterns. There's the lightning bolt shape. And uh, even in here, there's another smaller A, B, C, D, and that occurs frequently as well, where you'll get multiple patterns that form and will be completing into the same uh, level. And so we can find some confluence uh, by recognizing when there are multiple patterns. So here I'm just showing you that there was a succession of A, B, C, D patterns, and one pattern would lead into another pattern, and the Fibonacci extensions of the pattern, that they start to form a natural trend line, and you can use that as a parallel channel, uh, such as this, and you can recognize that you're in a range trading environment. I didn't have all of the patterns um, drawn in, as I mentioned back here is another A, B, C, D, and here's A, B, C, D. Uh, in there that I didn't mark in, didn't want to get it 
I didn't want to get the chart too clustered uh, on this. Uh, and then here you can see this A, B, C, D cell up towards the top of this channel. And that, that led to a sell-off that broke that uh, lower support line and led to a larger move. So now let's take a look at some of the variations of the CD leg that I've been talking about so you can get a little bit better idea because it's very good to know the characteristics of this pattern. So on this slide, you'll see some of the characteristics of the pattern and this first part I think is very important because less than half the time the AB leg is equal to the CD leg and 60% of the time that CD leg is going to be a variation by being an extension of the AB leg, meaning it's going to be longer than the AB leg and that additional length is likely going to be to the 127 uh, the 1618, maybe to 2.0, meaning twice the twice the length of the AB leg. That that tends to happen in more trending types um, of markets, uh, but generally the 127 is is probably the most common ratio. Then the 1618 after that, then the 2.0. Um, another variation is the CD leg, the slope or angle of that leg. Um, might be steeper or wider than the AB leg. And that again, can give you a clue as to the type of market condition you're in. Again, here's a illustration of the ABCD pattern at the D 1.0 D completion. So an additional length here would be the um, 127 and an additional length would be all the way up to the 1618. Since we don't always get perfect uh, patterns in markets, uh, most of the time you're gonna see some variation. Every once in a while you get just an absolutely perfect pattern that lands exactly on the D1.0. But again, that's that's not the norm in trading. It's not the norm with any any patterns in trading. So in this example, you can see the A, B had a double top on the, the C leg, and then the uh, price comes down. It even skids a little bit below the D127, uh, but that's where the market then turns and has a nice rally to the upside. So a lot of traders, um, when they're planning trades and they're not aware of these extensions, what tends to happen is they'll enter a trade, a buy pattern such as this and place a stop just a little bit below. But because we know that 60% of the time, this leg is likely to extend, traders are gonna get stopped out all the time. And I do get emails from traders saying these patterns don't work. Well, it's not that the patterns don't work. The patterns are just the patterns. That's all they are. It's up to the trader to uh, have the trade management uh, that is successful with the patterns or with anything that they are trading. Once again, here's um, how you calculate the CD leg um, extensions. So you can use that and find some examples like this on your chart and um, just work out that. It should take you no more than a couple of seconds to um, do the calculation and either subtract or add that to the C point. Now again, these patterns, they will form in any market and all time frames. So they're they're what we call fractal, meaning that they have the same properties and characteristics to them on a daily chart, a weekly chart, a one minute chart, a tick chart. And so whatever markets that you trade, you can um, study and learn these patterns and use them for your trading. But you do have to work out your trade management um, with it. And so you uh, need to take some time to study that and uh, come up with some trade plan ideas and then test them out in the market. Now here's an example in the Forex market of an ABCD. You notice that the AB leg, um, you can see the slope and angle of that. And the C to D leg was just a little bit wider. It took a little bit more time 
uh, to form. I then found support right at the D 1.0 and turned to the upside. So the symmetry is still okay, even though it took more bars for this. It was the way that the bars came down. <clears throat> they went a little bit sideways uh, and then came down and especially close to the completion point, they started the start, the bar started to decrease in uh, size and found found some support. In the Forex and the currency markets, because of the nature of those markets, um, those markets tend to get trendier moves. So they tend to get quick reversal moves like this uh, in that market. And they will extend um, because of that, you know, to the 127 and the 1618 completion areas. So here's another example uh, on Forex chart. And here's an example of completing down here at the uh, 127. And you can see how the market came down to the 1.0 and uh, tag that came back up, had a you know good move to the upside, and then back down, found support again at the 127, another rally testing that high, another pullback, and then that's where the big move started from. So again, you've got to be aware and understand uh, the markets that you are trading. So I mentioned the Forex markets, currency markets um, tend to be trendier. So once this move really got going, um, it went into a really large trend. So an example with the slope and the angles, you can see here in the A to B leg and the C to D leg, even though the C D leg extended up to the 1618 and it turned out to be 2.618 of the B C length, that it was actually very symmetrical. And you can see that by the formation of the triangles. They're very symmetrical, even though this one is extended. But once it got to that 1618, the market just turned and had that large move to the downside. So the slope and angles were very similar on this. So this just is illustrating the symmetry of a pattern. So on the left, the ABCD, the lightning bolt shape is very symmetrical. The center example, you can see that the CD leg just falls almost straight down. So comparing that to the slope of the AB leg, this can give traders a warning that something is changing in the market. Possibly a trend is starting. Maybe there was a news item that came out. Um, but this can be a warning sign for traders to either let the market um, show signs of slowing down support or possibly just stay out. Now, this is an example of a symmetry in the B to C leg, where the B to C leg takes a lot of time in comparison to the A leg to form, and it really goes sideways. Well, generally when markets go sideways like that, especially extended, it's going to be more of a coil. Um, and those have the potential for very explosive moves once they move out of those coils. So that could actually negate the ABCD pattern altogether. So this example is just showing that the AB leg has about nine bars and the C to D leg has uh, seven bars in it. And so that's, that's symmetrical. So what a trader would not want to see is they wouldn't want to see um, a count like you've got um, you know, nine bars in your A, B leg and two bars in your C, D leg. That would obviously say that uh, the sentiment <laughs> is changing in the formation of that leg. And either the buyers or the sellers, depending on the direction of the pattern, um, have become very aggressive. This particular example is showing that the first leg is 13, bars in the second leg is 21 and that actually gives us a Fibonacci ratio of 0.61 the 0.618 the golden uh, mean and so this is still considered a symmetrical 
um, pattern, even though there's more bars in that C to D leg. Here's an example of what the asymmetrical ABCD would look like in a long coil. And uh, see what I mean? That when they break out of the coils, they can get very explosive. And so that turned that CD leg into a long, wide ranging steep decline. And you would want to avoid that. Now, the steep slope and angles that I mentioned, they can be a they can be a warning sign. So here's an example. You see the A to B leg that's formed, and look how steep the C to D leg is. So that might be a warning sign that something has changed. But sometimes if you continue to monitor the pattern, then what happens is is that asymmetry. Uh, is going to resolve with some more time and the pattern will become symmetrical. Let me get all the lines in here. That was a slow, it's very slow flying, isn't it? But this is just illustrating, the horizontal line is illustrating the time that it took the A to B leg. And then you can see that that matches now the time that the C to D leg took to form. So although it was asymmetrical here, a bit more time, move up around that one to seven extension, and then the market was ready to turn to the downside. I mentioned earlier that these patterns will often form with multiple smaller patterns within the larger legs. And here's an example of that. So we have the larger A, B, C, D pattern. And within both the A to B leg and the C to D leg, smaller patterns formed. Um, I like to see that uh, when that's happening. The more patterns, the better. Uh, they generally can show you where um, the area of resistance or support might be. And of course, I use other tools uh, of support resistance um, as well when using these, these patterns to help plan out the trades. But if you start studying these, um, also be looking for those those smaller patterns. So this small ABCD cell pattern forms and the trader has no idea at that point that this larger pattern might be forming, but it does get a nice retracement, a tradable retracement to the downside. And then the pattern completes as a larger pattern offering uh, an even better opportunity. Now there's also some warning signs that you want to be aware of. So in the book, Trade What You See, How to Profit from Pattern Recognition, we discuss the warning signs and that certainly is going to be helpful with trade management. And it could also be avoiding a trade that might have a higher potential for being a losing trade than a winning trade. So gaps at or near the completion points are warning signs. So you wanna watch and see how that C to D leg is forming. So you can see here that there is a gap close to that D completion point. And then the market hit the 127, had a small retracement down, but then continued up in a trending type of a fashion. So that's definitely something that um, traders using these patterns want to be aware of. And then the next example, this is what I call a close call completion. That's when you get an A, B, C, D pattern, a little bit of a steep slope and angle here. It doesn't quite get down here to where that completion point is. And then it turns, it does a pretty full retracement and then really comes down sharply um, below that area. So I would consider if this happens, I generally consider the trade over and it did not give me an opportunity to enter. However, if you're patient and you recognize a turn in the market, here we can now define this structure with the parallel channel and the market's having steeper down moves and now an A, B, C, D cell pattern forms at resistance offering um, you know, a good opportunity on the sell side. So having some patience uh, when using pattern recognition is going to uh, help you in the long run. Long bars can also be warning signs. So you see here, we take the A, B, C, D, and look at the C, D leg. Um, if the if we can even call this a C, D leg, uh, because of you know you only have you know one, two, 
not even a very good retracement bar there. And then it just starts to the downside, um, breaking support. So, you know, this can give the trader, um, you know, a warning sign to avoid this type of a setup as well. But generally, this would be probably considered an invalid A, B, C pattern because of that. Another example here, here's long, steep, wide ranging bars. Here's a kind of close call going on again, right there, doesn't quite get there, gets the retracement and then sort of falls away. Okay, now that we've got some structure for the ABCD, let's see how that ABCD now forms a Gartley pattern. ABCDs can form on their own, uh, not be a Gartley pattern or not be a butterfly pattern or not be a three drive pattern. So this is where the Gartley 222 trading pattern came from. And I find, you know, when I see things out there on the internet, uh, somebody else talking about these patterns and they, they don't, they don't really know where this pattern came from. Um, so the H.M. Gartley, as I mentioned in 1935, he um, described the pattern. However, he never referred to it himself as a Gartley pattern. Um, Larry Pesavento was the person that uh, gave the name the Gartley 222 pattern to this. And um, that was back in 1976 uh, when Larry had started at the firm Drexel Burnham. So let's take a look from Gartley's book, from his 1935 book. This is what he actually had in the book. This was on page 222 of the book. So what Gartley was describing, you see the uptrend here, and then the market changes and it creates this first retracement pattern. So this is the Gartley pattern. It's a retest of a recent high or a low if it's a buy pattern. So um, Gartley said that you sell the first um, ABC correction in a new trend. So this would be a new downtrend starting, the uptrend has ended, and you get this retracement pattern with the ABCD in it, and stops can be placed just above that uh, high. So that's what a Gartley pattern is. So let's take a look at um, examples of that. So here's some line drawings. So this would be a buy pattern. So you have your swing to the upside and then your ABCD forms within that swing. And this is what the sell pattern would look like. You have a swing to the downside and then your retracement pattern back up the ABCD is contained within that previous swing. So that's really important to keep in mind. So here's some um, illustrations of the pattern drawn out with the ratios. And again, it was Larry Pesavento who added the ratios, the Fibonacci ratios to um, this pattern, the butterfly pattern, the three drive pattern, the ABCD pattern, etc. cetera. Uh, so that make sure that we credit the right um, people for, for these things. Some of these patterns have been renamed to little animal names and little sea creatures, but they're basically the same thing and they came, they came from Larry's work. So here's what um, this looks like. And so we wanna see that ABCD contained. So the D extends beyond, it's not going to be a Gartley pattern. It will be what we call a butterfly pattern, but it's not a Gartley pattern any longer. So here's um, the same things that um, we looked at at the A, B, C, D, the C point has to stay above or below the A point. But again, um, the D completion, this D completion cannot exceed the X point. Um, it can be a double top, uh, but it just cannot exceed it. Let's look at a few more examples. This was actually a chart from Larry. Um, years and years ago when I first started studying with him and he would fax charts in the evening and this was one of the charts that uh, was faxed to me and so this is the illustration uh, that he used uh, on it 
And so this pattern, if you study technical analysis back 100, 200 years ago, however far you go back in technical analysis, you will find these patterns. Um, they're inherent in the markets, the way that the swings, uh, the harmonics um, uh, are always forming in the market. So these are classic patterns. Okay, so just some more illustration. And again, check your symmetry. So here's a very strong move to the upside and then a retracement pattern retesting that low point. And there's some time element with that. Just a few more examples. This is an example of Tesla, uh, two, Gartley 222 buy pattern. So you can see that the market had been in the downtrend, comes off the lows, forms the ABCD as a retest at the D127, and then the market continues a trend to the upside. This is the intraday um, chart of the S&P 500. These are quite frequent um, in the markets. And uh, you can see the uh, retracement levels, the X uh, to A, the D is a 618 retracement. Um, we've got the uh, A to B leg, a 0 0.50, but notice the symmetry and all of the triangles. So when you do draw these patterns out, take a look at the symmetry of the pattern. Again, this is a cell pattern completed at the, the 1.0 D and the market turned to the downside. Here's an example of the last chance Gartley cell pattern. Remember the 886 I mentioned as the last chance Fib ratio. So here's an ABCD pattern, actually a succession of them that extended up to that 1618 CD leg and right on to the 886. And uh, there's where the market turned to the downside from. So again, another chart Larry had faxed to me, that was back in 1998, uh, showing an example of a classic Gartley 222 pattern uh, with the ratios and the ABCD in it. Uh, this was on the silver market and his note was Warren Buffett announces his long holdings in silver, which prompts a buying stampede at point B. And then look what happens. So many times you hear something like that in the news, and it's more of a contrarian signal. Now we're going to take a look at the butterfly pattern. So we've got the ABCD, the ABCD of a Gartley pattern, which is within the previous swing. Now we're going to take a look at the butterfly reversal patterns. And so this chart is showing a couple of examples. They're true contrarian patterns. Um, markets are going to be declining when these form as buy patterns, and the market is going to be um, rising as they form cell patterns. Again, you're probably going to see, especially on longer term charts, when these patterns form, um, there's probably going to be an extreme of um, sentiment in the market. So at a cell pattern, you would be seeing an extreme of um, of greed in the market. And as a buy pattern, you would be seeing um, in excessive fear in the market. So here's the illustration. So here we have the A, B, C, D. So it's not a Gartley because it's extending outside of that previous swing. And again, we can measure that the X to A to D extension is usually going to be the 127 and 1618. However, sometimes it might be a little bit shorter or it might be a little bit, a little bit longer. Uh, but here is the what you want to look for, that A, B, C, D extending above or below the X. Here's a chart example using the NASDAQ intraday where the market had been declining heavily. Notice the A, the B, the C, the D pattern. So you have a Gartley cell pattern and then that turns the market back down and notice how the A, B, C, D is extending below. So the, um, the extension fell short of the 127 by just a little bit. So you want to combine your skill of using the completion points of the ABCD pattern 
and also the extension pattern. So the extension is using the X to A length and you multiply that by 127 or 1618 and subtract it if it's a buy pattern and you add it if it's a sell pattern. So we talked about some of the warning signs with the ABCD. So sometimes if you have a Gartley pattern, but you start to see some warning signs like the long bars like this, um, that can be a clue that a butterfly pattern may be forming. So sometimes you see the Gartley pattern here. Well, don't give up just yet. Um, even if you get in and you get stopped out, because if the price continues up to a butterfly, that might be an opportunity for a larger move to the downside. Now they don't always get this type of explosive move, but they certainly have the potential to get this type of distance. In um, late 2021, early 2022, all of the indexes on the longer term charts had the butterfly sell patterns on them. And so there was actually a succession of them that formed and not, not all of them got this um, big of a move. The earlier ones would get some retracement and then the market would turn back to the upside. But when you start to see a succession of two to three in a row, especially on your longer term charts, you really want to pay attention because generally the market is most likely getting ready to turn. So this is why we call this a powerful um, reversal pattern. Sometimes you'll see the formation of a butterfly pattern within a, a previous swing, just like the Gartley pattern. But instead, you get that extension move to the upside. In this case, this example was going to that 886 retracement, and then the market turned to the downside. Again, knowing what environment that you are in is going to make a big difference. If you know you're in a downtrend, uh, and then you're getting sell patterns in the direction of that trend, that's going to be very valuable for you. And vice versa, if you're in an uptrend and you're getting these patterns um, in an uptrend, that is going to be a good tool for you to have. So another example of the Gartley pattern, a sell pattern failing. See this big long hard range bar. Now a trader may not be able to recognize since this is that last bar in the pattern, that that's going to be a long wide ranging bar. So sometimes you get in a trade and it just doesn't work. Um, but again, if we go to the next slide, we can see what happened with that is the market continued up and formed the butterfly sell pattern and then had the large move to the downside. Here's an example of multiple butterfly patterns, and this is forming the three drive pattern. Actually, this one should be over here, um, but we have one, a two, and a three. And markets often will pause or turn after you can see like three consecutive um, moves to the downside. That's our fourth um, pattern is the three drive pattern. So a lot of times on the swings, you can take like where the X is to the A, and that's going to be a FIB ratio around the one to seven. This one's one and a half, just a little bit larger. And then the next one comes another rally to the upside. And then the extension comes down and that's a FIB ratio of 1.4. Again, you've got that natural trend line uh, forming there. But the, the main thing here is this was even another butterfly pattern here. So there was one here, a butterfly pattern here, and a butterfly pattern here. So notice this butterfly pattern got a nice move, even above where the pattern started. Um, this one got a retracement of the entire pattern, but this is the one that really got the explosive move to the upside. Uh, so that, um, again, is I think a very good example of you kind of stay with it when you see it happening. Another example with the Euro of uh, multiple butterfly patterns. Now this particular um, butterfly pattern, notice how it only got the smallest of a retracement there and then continued that trend to the upside and it formed another 
a butterfly sell pattern and an explosive move to the downside. So as a trader, your trading plan has got to be including, you know, you've got to be taking some losses sometimes. Um, and then you have to be prepared to be getting into your next setup because you don't know which patterns are going to be the most um, profitable. So the butterfly pattern that forms again, so when all of the indexes are forming the same type of pattern, so here's an example of the Dow Jones, the futures contract, and the NASDAQ, and the Russell, and the S&P, all forming these butterfly patterns, that is going to be a big warning uh, to you that um, the market is getting ready for a larger move in the opposite direction. So just to show you that these patterns um, have existed and they form for, for as long as technical analysis has been in existence, this is a chart from the 1930s. And here's a butterfly pattern that formed. Um, at the highs here of 1937, there were butterfly patterns that formed in the, into the highs of 1929 as well. Um, you can see the explosive move. You can also see an A, a B, a C, a D buy pattern. Uh, you can see A, B, C extended D with a retracement here. Uh, and uh, almost a one, two, three drive to the top pattern with that. So when you're learning to trade, um, you've got to find something that you can learn to master and have focus on in the markets. And you only need to learn a handful of patterns. So you do need to learn about market behavior, price behavior as well. Uh, so I do hope that today you're going to consider studying this three and a half hour trading course um, on those four setups. So it's going to cover uh, in depth the AB equals CD because you've got to have that as the root structure and the Gartley pattern, the butterfly pattern, and the three drive pattern. And with this, if you sign up for this, I'll also add you to my subscription of weekly market setups. Um, I'm going to put that I'll put you in there for six months. Uh, you can have a uh, two year access to this course so you can come back and study because it does, it does take some time. It's probably not going to take you two years to learn these patterns, but sometimes you want to come back and review some of the information. So this price is a very good price. You're going to get a lot of information. I showed you a lot of information today. A lot of these slides were excerpt from my 12 hour uh, mastering pattern recognition. So if you um, get this discount here and then you decide later you'd like to study that full course, the 12 hours, it brings um, you through very, very beginning um, of the pattern structures, the history of Fibonacci ratios, and it's going to bring you all the way down to trade management, developing a trade plan, some materials with that as well. And if you decide to get that course as well, um, I'll go ahead and put you in with a group um, group workshops that I'm doing between now and June. But that's if you decide to get the 12 hour uh, mastering pattern with recognition course, but I'll, I'll deduct um, the $99 from that course if you get it. You'll need to email me and let me know, and I'll send you a special link for it. But do start out with this three and a half hour course. So you have access for two years. The weekly market setups, I walk you through this stuff um, every single week, uh, and you'll get a very good handle on some very good, solid, powerful trading patterns that you can apply to whatever market and time frame that you're trading. So if you sign up for this, don't forget to use the coupon code at checkout to get the discount. Well, thank you very much for joining me today. Feel free to email me questions. If you email me between um, this Friday, which is 
February 27th, I'm going to be gone away from my computer until, uh, no, it's January 27th to February 6th. So if I don't reply in that time period, I will reply once I get back. But uh, I do hope you'll sign up for this course and best wishes for successful trading.